A very good morning on behalf of India Fintech Forum. I am Aditya Rajkothari, and I have Miss Ashwarya Jayshankar, who is co-founder at Hyperface. She is a banker by heart and passionate about reimagining banking and money management. She has driven multiple innovation and transformation projects at banks and fintechs. A very warm welcome to Fintech Leadership Series. Thanks a lot, Aditya. Thank you so much for having me here. Coming to my first question, Hyperface is Asia's first credit card as a service platform, solving the problem of transactional credit. Recently, AU Bank's Lit Card, which is India's first customizable credit card powered by Hyperface, issued one lakh cards, credit cards in just eight months. What had led to this success? Hey Aditya, I should also share with all of you that we have been awarded the uh, fintech of the year and retail banking innovation category by Nascom 10,000 startups for the AU Lit product. Uh, you know, it was great that the bank had a vision of doing something truly innovative. If you look at the credit cards in the market today, right, Aditya, you will get a cashback card, you will get a rewards card, or you will get a card for travel benefits. Nobody ever thought, hey, here is a customer. The customer might want different things at different point of time. Why don't I give a card that he, where he has the power to choose? That thought really came from a banking partner. Where Hyperface came in is Hyperface as a credit card, as a service platform. We strongly believe that we are in the age of banking as a service version too. You know, gone are the days when getting an API from the bank was a great thing for a third party app or a embedded finance application. Now these brands want to push the envelope on customer experience significantly. If you take the example of uh, credit cards itself, right? Uh, 4 billion Amazon ICICI cards in barely two and a half years. That's the power of embedded finance and that's the power of uh, customers receiving their financial products within the applications that, I, that they use every day, right? So Hyperface tries to build for that, right? Where we significantly enhance the customer experience across board on credit cards, which is how a project like AU Bank Lit literally sat into our ambitions because it meant a lot of orchestration. We have actually created a smart benefit platform which supports the lit implementation and tomorrow can support any innovative card program that any issuer or a co-brand wants to have, right? Because uh, if the, at the heart of lit is the thought that I will give the power to my customers to choose. But at the heart of the product engine is an ability to compute dynamic rewards, compute accelerated offers, pose real-time cashback, ability to ingest data from multiple bank systems, ability to integrate with different partners of a bank because to get a credit card program come alive, banks need to work with, work with a rewards partner, with a credit underwriting partner, with a core credit card engine partner, with a lounge access partner, with a golf course access partner. Hyperface makes it very simple to deal with these multiple APIs through a smart benefits platform. Congratulations on your success. Coming Thank to my second you. question. The digital lending market in India is expected to become $1.3 trillion market by 2030. What are the challenges in digital lending in 2023? See, honestly, whatever was the challenges, a lot of them were breaking up, right? There was a time that you wouldn't have significant track of data to underwrite the customer, right? I mean, uh, right. I launched India's first digital savings account in a large private bank. And there, when we started credit card as a cross-sell, I'm talking about back in 2018, 50% of the customers did not even have a bureau score match. Products like two-wheeler loans, products which are typically early um, entry loans, right? Your gold loan, your two-wheeler loan, they were not even part of that score track. Eventually, all these products today are consumed. So the, any customer with a credit history is tracked. With the, pro, what should I say, proliferation of credit, what you're calling as pay later, checkout finance, Amazon today offers credit, Flipkart today offers credit, uh, tying up with banks. All this, what it means is the basic underwriting of the customers has significantly improved. 
the, there are more and more customers coming into the organized credit fold the second significant importance that has happened is customers are becoming more aware and proactive about their credit score right managing my credit score is important for me to get a good rate from the institution to get a good loan from institution all this becomes important and then the third factor i mean we have all spoken about the india story in the context of demographic dividend and we are all witnessing it in action right i was just seeing a data point which says uh, that there has been a year on year two and a half three times increase on uh, itr filing of greater than 10 lakhs so right, as yeah. more and more indians are moving to middle class earlier we were a saving led economy there is an openness towards credit there is an openness towards knowing their credit and managing it proactively in my mind all this augurs really well for the lending ecosystem however uh, there have also been some black sheep there have also been stories around collections there there have been reasons where regulator has to step in uh, if anything to curtail this buoyancy right anything when you get right. too excited you tend to cross the line thankfully we have a very active regulator who draws the line and redefines so yes at this point of time while there is a little churn going through i am very confident of the mid to long term credit score story and credit growth story of india what we earlier called ntc new to credit that number is coming down ntc to for my product the ntcc matters which is new to credit cards because interestingly credit cards which is 5% of customers there is we are seeing an annualized growth of 25 to 30% so having more customers having a credit track eventually would qualify them for a lifestyle product like a credit card as well so your top of the funnel is building up for such products so i think the lending story looks good and bright is how i would put it aditya that's great insights what is the future of credit cards with upi for transactions and how is it expected to evolve in the upcoming years the upi on credit cards is something that roop uh, npca team has been actively pushing and i think it's a step in the right direction at a recent interaction um, Uh, uh, uh you know in an event sudeep to who heads the assets the retail assets and unsecured including credit cards for icici which is one of the largest private uh, issuers in the country private bank issuers he opined that upi on cp could be a game changer and i totally second his views because uh, somewhere credit card has also been that lifestyle elitist product right one leg of it was underwriting second part right if you typically looked at ticket sizes for a credit card it was always at a merchant establishment for a certain category it will be higher 3000 you know upi ticket sizes 200 300 rupees credit card ticket sizes were 10x 15x one because of this underlying demographic dis, di, di, uh, uh, divis, division between a customer who gets a credit card and a upi as i explained to you for your previous question these lines are blurring now more and more customers are qualifying for credit so a right. credit card might be offer i offered as a sashitize credit card it doesn't necessarily have to be 1 lakh rupees limit you could get a credit card at a 20000 limit the biggest cost in credit card issuance also was that nice card that you got which had to be couriered to you upi as a form factor might eliminate the need for a physical card thereby mm-hmm. bringing down the cost significantly for mm-hmm. banks lastly upi is something see we always talk about this in behavioral economics right what you are conditioned to do you will be able to do it more easily than a new behavior stepping in all these new to credit customers are also interestingly customers who are habituated to using upi so getting them adapted to pay on upi on credit card is not going to be very difficult because you are in the line of sight or you are in the uh, same degree of comfort that the customer has in using a payment instrument so all in all i think it ties back to the lending story the upi moment for credit cards is very much coming i mean we are seeing that the circulars that uh, uh, yeah, npci has come up with for operating guidelines the tpap requirements for upi on cc and issue as being buoyant to me tells me that it will revolutionize credit card market in india and even i have also read that rbi is considering allowing mastercard and visa as well to issue credit cards on upi so and other thing i explained right the cost coming down significantly 
so i think this could be another game changer for the market aditya the upi on credit card piece it will not in my mind replace the credit cards that have been there in right. my mind the market is too small there and this will grow the market significantly there will be a displacement from your regular transactions to upi on credit card transactions upi to upi on cc but i don't think uh, the old world uh, jewelry shops and apparels and uh, physical stores that had the credit card this thing are going to suffer because of upi on cc the market is going to grow significantly that's great insights recently the financial literacy and inclusion survey held by reserve bank of india revealed that the digital banking awareness is at the same level among urban and rural populations all over the country how can india increase its financial literacy rate in 2023 see i think financial literacy rate is all encompassing while we are at one hand gungho about upi touching its billions right uh, transactions and what not on the other hand look at the issues that are happening around collection malpractices fraud malpractices all this is causes for concern right i mean just as digital awareness is on the rise digital banking is also on the rise on the other hand a bank like sbi has some 200 million customers who are digital active just imagine the sheer number and volume right now then it becomes very important to institutionalize awareness when you say financial literacy it is not just about uh, you know whether to invest in an fd or a ulip for me it is more also about because see remember this set of customers they might be new to a bank account they might just open a gpay and get transacted so getting them aware on something as simple as do not share your personal details right recently right. Uh, just yesterday mr r chandrashekar or uh, rajiv chandrashekar i think who's a union minister has told people do not share your mobile number awareness the digital awareness is as important literacy uh, financial literacy especially we tend to think of it as third degree sophistication no something as simple as do not share your otp and password has to be drilled down because these people are losing money the people who committed those suicides on collections were from some tsc towns Right? right because they don't know their rights to me financial literacy is also about informing them of rights how many people mm -hmm. know about ombudsman by rbi as a banker i educate my friends if you have an issue with the bank please go to ombudsman banks are accountable to the tat on service resolution for any ombudsman query so these are the things i think financial literacy focus should shift on because these customers please for them to start equity trading might take some time but they need to know the basics of money management they need to know the basics of digital banking ensuring that their personal details are not shared being aware of their rights and uh, the rights of the banks and the financial institutes to them so i think there is a lot of ground to cover um, on that right how do you view the competition in your industry do you have do you have any plans for expansion in abroad See, we really strongly believe in making an india for the world right i mean uh, we have seen that play out uh, very well in the saas uh, play where we have uh, zoho and freshworks and everybody today taking their software globally right, uh, right. i mean it was a matter of pride that uh, uh, shridhar vembu could write to elon musk that uh, you know zoho would support the salesforce um, scrapping and using zoho end to end but that's the confidence right that is what gives the wings in the air for entrepreneurs like us who are looking up to these people and that is the equivalent we want to create in banking as a service and we have had giants uh, walking before us in this space like m2p or zeta right today i think m2p is there in 100 banks across the middle east far east all those places so ditto with zeta zeta has predominantly gone to the north american and european market so i mean in terms of the product that we are building and the problems that we are solving it has been very gladdening to know that these are problems that exist across the world it is not just a um, co brand in india that suffering a banana republic uh, co brand or a gap co brand equally has such customer experience gaps and we are very confident that hyperface will one day solve this for across the globe and not just for india we wish the same Thank you.
you have more than a decade of experience in the indian fintech ecosystem what advice would you like to give to the young entrepreneurs in india see uh, my my biggest uh, advice or uh, what should i say i wouldn't even call it advice i would say it's more like counseling <laughs> for lack of a better word don't get deterred mm. by the regulation right because every second fintech entrepreneur the young ones that i talk to get very worried about regulations and rbi i think most of the time if you keep the customer at heart and build journeys you are and you are building the right things you are always on the right right it is only when we think that oh there is a gray and they let me walk down the path and typically that happens when you want to take shortcuts right uh, i'm not saying do not take shortcuts but keep the regulatory whatever in mind in fact uh, for us right because we are a b2b fintech people might think how much does regulation matters actually it's the other way around i have to build for a product that's applicable to all the banks and their internal compliances and risk and of course the market regulator right so mm-hmm. one of our uh, founding team members is our head uh, legal and compliance so invest in people invest in knowing about the regulation rather than just jumping in deal to build something we are dealing with people's money right so regulator will expect certain responsibility and it is clear that more and more regulated entities will get formed to manage this because uh, if it is better if you are a customer facing fintech to get regulated rather than not get regulated right and because yes. you are operating with customer data you are operating with financial products uh, regulation creates those nice what you can do what cannot do lines so i would say if you are coming into fintech come with a mindset that i will build around regulations that will give you a long and fair play in the long haul that will be my biggest Uh, what do you call like i said coaching or counseling words rather than advice because advice sounds boring right i'm sure the youth will definitely benefit from your advice i thank miss aishwarya jayshankar co-founder at hyperface to share her valuable insights in credit industry and her entrepreneurial journey have a great weekend ahead thanks aditya thank you so much